minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. You ready for do do more in the future? Trap yes. talk podcasts? Yes. Man. Only, only trap talk. Exclusive. Yes. Exclusive. Exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. Rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the crop, gotta love it, love it, and not them. Hop from the hop to the rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up Get the club to pop when I come up with it. Everybody, we do it. Everybody, we do it. You're now tapped into the coolest reptile podcast in the world, Trap Talks Holy Monitor Session. I'm your boy, MJ. What is good? Happy Sunday. What's up, players? This is your first time tapping in. Do your boy a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Be a part of that notification gang. That way you're on top of every podcast I drop here on the Trap Talk with MJ podcast YouTube channel, man. But what is good? Shout out to everyone in the early birds. You guys know how we get things started here, man. We're going to get right to the point for the freshest. Bestest rodents delivered to your doorstep. Go to coldbloodcafe.com. $30 flat rate shipping. Number one of the game. If you got eggs, put them inside of a sim box. Less steps, less stress. If it's a sim, it's a win. Shout out to John and Alex. Shout out to Steven and Ashley over at Focus Cube Habitats. Number one PVC built enclosures in the game. Go give them a follow. Go put your order in. And definitely number one stainless steel rack company in the game. Freedom Breeder. Shout out to Jesse, the entire Freedom Breeder crew. Thank you for your support. Shout out to the big dog, Miguel Garcia. Always evolving pythons. Always making an impact. Always being player. That's my dog right there. Go give him a follow on Instagram. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel. And please go check out what he's going to have available on Morph Market. Shout out to my man, Amazing Basins, homie Allen. Literally any day now about to be dropping a litter of basins. I think this is going to be his third litter. So congratulations, Allen. I'm, I'm stoked. I'm, you know, fingers crossed, obviously. We already know how this works. But, uh. Go give him a follow, man. Don't be that one to be late to the, the party when you find out that this guy is going to have some amazing bass in productions, production. So shout out to my boy, Alan. Thank you for your support. Shout out to Blake Stewart over at Stewart Design. Uh, this guy right here is no joke. If you want to elevate your brand, if you want to elevate your marketing game, this is the guy you got to go through. Stewart Design, SDIdentity.com. Check him out on Instagram. And then shout, shout out to my boy, the OG in the game, Triple OG, Mark Bailey Reptiles. Head over to Morph Market, see what he has available ball python-wise. This guy has serious heat, been in the game, highly respected. Shout out to my boy, Mark Bailey. And then shout out to the leaders of the industry. Shout out to Rami over at the Reptile Super Show. They're on the number one West Coast, uh, excuse me, number one show on the West Coast by far. Um, the Las Vegas show is coming up. But then right before Vegas show, we have Pomona, baby. I'm excited to go to Pomona. Are you going to Pomona? Drop a comment. Let me know. Let's link up. And then, of course, shout out to Brian Potter and Bob Ashley over at the NARBC, one of the funnest shows all around when it comes to meeting people from all over the world, all over the country. NARBC is where it's at, man, for sure. So thank you so much to all these gentlemen for throwing such an amazing show, and I'll catch you at one of these shows 110%. I hope you have plans on going. Shout out to U.S. ARC. Congratulations to U.S. ARC. Congratulations to all of us, man. If you guys don't know what the hell I'm congratulated on, you don't. that means you don't follow U.S. ARC. I suggest you go do that and go see what I'm excited about. Huge win for us. Super huge win. 
So thank you if you out there, if you support US Arc. Thank you, Phil Goss. This is what the fuck I'm talking about, baby. We come together. No one's fucking with us. Plain and simple. If you would like to support US Arc for as low as $5 a month, go down right now, become a US Arc member, join the team, and let's fight for our fucking animal rights. Again, I'm super pumped up. Congratulations. Phil Goss, thank you so much. I cannot wait to celebrate with all you guys at the next show. And then, uh, yeah, guys, if you guys want to tap in with what I have more podcast, more than what the podcast uh, and whatnot, please go see what animals I work with. Go see what projects I'm working with on my Instagram page. Go give me a follow, MJ Exotics Cartel with an A, not an E. And then make sure you follow the podcast's Instagram page as well, Trap Talk with MJ Podcast. Shout out to all my Twitch viewers. Um, if you out there would like to support me, if you want to support this channel, I do this for a full time. If you want to support this grind and help me grow, you could send me a super chat, man. Any super chat, any questions from my homie Kai uh, or myself, I'll put it on the big screen. We'll get it out there, um, and I, I I appreciate it. Also, you can send me any donations you like to Exotics Cartel with an A, not an E, on PayPal. And then last but not least, what's going down after every Sunday podcast, I have my Trap Talk Zoom session with all my Patreon members, man. Shout out to my Trap Talk Patreon members. If you also want to become a part of this growth, a part of this wave, go down, join the Trap Talk Patreon. Patreon family. Soon as this podcast is over, we tap in, we all get together on the Zoom session, and I can't wait. It's been a while since I've tapped in with you guys because how busy I've been, but guess what? We're catching up tonight. It's going to go down. So again, join the family, man. We're well over 100 Patreon members. I want to keep this growing. I want to grow this to the top. So please out there, if you ever feel like you want to support me, best thing you do is go down and join the Trap Talk Patreon family. Shout out to my Patreon members. I love you guys. Who's in the building? Who's ready for this podcast? I know I am. Sunday. What is good? Homie Deviant Glass in the building. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Give him a follow. Jake Hole in the building. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Uh, the homie Jason Holbrook, Team Zoo Dreams in the building. Give this guy a follow. It's my boy. Trap Talk Patreon member all day. Sunshine State Sulfurs. What is good? Thanks for tapping in. Wise Guys. What is good? Thanks for tapping in. Uh, Royal Bama Reptiles. What up, Blake? I know Alexis is tapping in too. Uh, both amazing people. Both Patreon members. Thank you so much for tapping in. The homie Dom. 702 Serpents in the building. You ready for that Vegas show, bro? The homie Don's for Vegas. Go give him a follow. Trap Talk Patreon member all day. Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike in the building. What a crazy bastard this guy is, man. Uh, can you just stop smoking cigarettes, Mike? You know I love you, but quit the cigarettes. That's all That's all I got to say. I love you, man. We're going to talk later about the cigarettes. Uh, let's see. Who else? Uh, Genomic Labs in the building. What's up, Genomic Labs? Thanks for tapping in. The homie Tasty Hill Herbs. What's up, player? Respect. Thanks for being here. He's a, he's an OG, by the way. I, I, this guy goes back to the Zoo Dream day or uh, the unfiltered day. So thanks for being here. Spectral Seven, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. Uh, Derek Pides, my boy Derek Pides, Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Thanks for tapping in. Amazing feeders for you. What is good? Thanks for tapping in. Where are you located? Can you contact me? I, I want to ask you some questions. Thanks for tapping in. Uniquely muted morphs. Big homie in the building. What is good? Thanks for tapping in. God damn. Look, it's Antoine Hood. High Desert Pythons. What is good, player? Thanks for tapping in. Bods Exotics, what is up, player? Thanks for tapping in. Trap Talk Patreon member. Oh, by the way, Antoine, hella Trap Talk Patreon member. Head of security. Do not fuck with me because I have Antoine Hood. Aiden B, what's up, Aiden B? Thanks for tapping in. Jersey Ball Lorenzo. And we're going to actually end it with the other half of Royal Bama Reptiles. Lexi, what is good? Thanks for tapping in. All right, what is good? <laughs> Excited. I'm bringing my boy back on for the second time. Um, just because, you know, I don't know. I, he's mentoring me a lot in uh, – Ways that I feel like, you know, I, I kind of want to show some gratitude on bringing him on and maybe picking his brain more about what his uh, his game plan has been with his monitors. Because if it's one thing that I've seen him being real successful with is uh, his, working with his monitors. I mean, his, his socializing skills are really, really next level. And I want to talk more about it. But without further ado, he's tapping in from Cali, my boy Kai in the building. What's up, Kai? What's up, man? Thanks for How's being it going? Here. I know how busy you are and all that. Thank you for being here. It means a lot. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I got to get back to it uh, after all this too, so it's all good, man. Yeah, there's a whole lot. There's a whole lot to keep up with. It's Sunday too, so I'm technically uh, preparing for you know all the shipping that I do all week. So, and can I can we kind of talk about what the workload's been like since the last time we talked? Because I mean, you've you've launched quite a bit yeah. since I had yeah, you on. Um, so the workload's gotten so so much that I basically had to cut back on a lot of small species of um you know random pets and smaller lizards that i had um trying to breed or or just you know they're just a part of your collection and stuff so um i had to basically devote another whole wall to to more bugs and things like that more grasshoppers um and then yeah basically just the the workload's gone up a lot man i'm 
busy 24 7 basically shipping almost every day of the week every day except for sunday um even on saturdays man i have a local post office that's not too far from me that i'd uh, you know run to that while the, all the other ones are closed i take care of uh, saturday shipments too um but yeah man lot, it's are, you, are, you, are you doing a lot of local stuff too like do you have like a lot of local plugs that people that you're plugging up or no yeah yeah there's a fair amount i probably get like a good i mean honestly there's a lot more people that are ordering out of state but um i get a good dozen or so every week something like that drop-offs local drop-offs pickups people that i meet at you know the local down the street to to meet up or something like that um and yeah man it's just right off the porch too you know what i mean like just people picking up right there i just hop off the porch and serve them and go back inside <laughs> it's, now, uh, I mean, it's I, a same I, thing I, different product you know I got to ask you, bro, like, how are you keeping up with the questions and the, you know, cause dude, I remember when you got me plugged in this, I, I was, yeah. I was probably bugging the shit out of you, but you also helped me out every time I had a question, but how's that, yeah. how's that been, how's that been cat keeping up with that? So at some point, you know, I, I do I try to help people out as much as I can, but um, there's times when I'm really busy too. And it gets to a point now where I'm technically scheduling people in and charging them a certain fee and then it'll be kind of it's more it's a little bit more than just them asking me random questions you know so it's kind of like a like a walkthrough type deal or uh, either vid through video or just there's just them you know there's a lot of questions and it really takes you know more than an hour to go through everything so to work with people thoroughly i do got to kind of schedule them in now just because the whole day is if i took the time a couple hours of the day to help them or whatever whatnot you know, it really tap in and kind of mess up my my whole goal on as far as how productive I want to be and get in orders and all that stuff like that. So, it, you know, it takes time to like you've seen the grasshoppers are kind of tricky. They're kind of difficult to work around. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, they, you know, they they jump and fly and they're they test um, you, bro. You know? but, yeah. So and and really it takes time for all that, you know, and um, I, I really dude. just got to devote nearly half a day to just cupping bagging shipping you know and then and then at the same time take care of the grasshopper still and then not to mention i have a whole monitor room too that i gotta take care of so yeah, yeah man yeah yeah it's uh it's been it's been great though don't get me wrong it's you know it's uh yeah. but uh yeah i don't know I, I'm, I'm at right now where i'm kind of just quiet about everything and this, this is the really first time i'm gonna say it but i've had to choose between grasshoppers and monitors you know mm. what i mean that's that's how but. um how busy I technically am. And um, I got rid of most of my Kimberly's. Don't get me wrong. Um, I got wow. rid of uh, a, lot, a lot of the other smaller stuff. So I still got the mangrove stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm not quitting on that. And I, I, I'm, i that's my truer passion out of all the other things, you the know, mangroves I mean. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I like the, like the mangroves and the types, the types that I have are, are one of a kind type of animals that I have in the country. So um, essentially it, you know, uh, I would take a lot of pride in what I was able to afford, come up with dream animals and all that stuff like that. You know, just like you, like with your dream animals and the snakes that you like and things like that. You know, so it's like, um, yeah, yeah, those are those are hanging, those are those are hanging around. But the grasshoppers though are growing, man. There's a demand, and I, I literally now I'm just I just bought a bunch of more bin setups that I'm gonna just critique and go through and yeah, just uh, set up a whole another. A whole nother system now so people can get the understanding on this grasshoppers need to be attended to every day right like you, there's yeah, every day, yeah. It, they're, they're like monitors every day you need to see them right right and that's why I, I i when people ask me you know what's the what's the trick i just tell them consistency that's yeah i mean it, as vague as it is it's everything it's uh you know sticking to it making sure that you feed them don't slack off just things like that you know where it's the every day because most people are going to be tending to their lizards every day or their reptiles every day, even if it's the snake, you know, that's sort of lower maintenance. But on a, on a normal basis, when you're really into the shits, like, you know, you're, you're, you're up and you're there when you don't even have to be, you know, you're just checking stuff out, doing things. Right. And um, man, it takes two minutes to feed them. It takes two minutes to, to work with them a little bit, just peep in there. You know what I mean? And um, basically, at least acknowledge them, get them, get, get, 
get their normal necessities in and that's it you know you don't got to do a whole lot more other than other than to just uh making sure that you feed them a few times a week at least you know like you don't got to feed them like 24 7 it's not not even like that but it's it's definitely very consistent though you know it's not like one time a week where you feed your roaches and then you right. come back to it and yeah it's not it's not like that at all you know i mean and also you know the I just feel like the importance, which we're going to talk to here in a minute, as far as why they're so nutritional, they have good nutrition going to your monitors yeah. because you recommend, uh, well, at least to me, you recommend organic romaine lettuce fed to your grasshoppers and that's all they're eating. Um, I've switched. So I've had, I've had, like I've mentioned before, I've had to switch it up a bit. So because my customers, um, you know, majority of them, I mean, not not even majority. I'd say all of them love love their animals, you know, and so they want right. to feed them the best things. And so, right. honestly, at first when I was just using romaine, um, it was kind of a turnoff to some of them, you know what I mean? Just because they're yeah. already gut loading better, they're gut loading with, you know, spirulina and bee pollen and using like more nutritious vegetables. So in turn, I had to also switch up too. I've had to guarantee a better a, a good product still you know something that wasn't lesser than what they were already given because i'm off i'm asking for more too you know what i mean so uh, okay. then i you know i switched to like squashes carrots things like Ooh. that like kind of uh yeah yeah i've uh, uh done different greens dandelion greens things like that so there's no longer just romaine at all I actually Holy nowadays I, I barely even use the romaine just because you know, it's just water you know what i mean and so if you think about it that's all they're if, if, if that's all they're really getting what are your animals really getting you know um wow. that's how i kind of had to look at it right and so uh, to the customers too because you sure i feed a handful to my guys but dude the customers buy the majority that i produce so i i want to guarantee a, a, a more gut loaded or well-fed product you know what i mean um i love it yeah so, that's amazing. Um, okay, so let's kind of go back to real quick as far as like, you know, you, if you, you saying that with the squash and this kind of a diet that you're giving to the crickets or not, excuse me, grasshoppers, you don't need to feed them every day. Um, it's just the, the way. OK, so it, it does. It basically wilts. It doesn't wilt as fast for sure, you know, because right. your lettuce and you got the lamps and it's hot Right. in a couple hours. Those are those aren't toast. really what they like, you know, they're toast. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Um, right. I do I do utilize the squashes and carrots a little bit more and the dandelions and things like that um, just because they, they do hold a little bit better um, and they just provide like that, like that sustenance that they still need. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, that's where that's where I try to, to then apply different food items that were still good and rich. I wasn't, you know, cutting corners or things like that or um just making it seem like it you know this was a inferior product at all at all you know right. um, i do feed them really well and they get a lot like i gotta buy boxes of it nearly every other day you know what i mean it really wow. just depends on 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 the amount of grasshoppers that i have but that's 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 what i basically go through within a couple of days is a a uh, couple cases of those things and i set them you know set them down and they eat them and then i refill them in a few hours just because the demand is crazy and they're kind of easily controlled, you know, like you can feed them a ton and have them obviously grow a little. It's like anything else, you know, you feed it a lot, very consistently, it's going to grow more. If you don't, they're, they're going to grow a little bit less. So as I stay on top of it and I have to meet demand every week, you know, I like when I, when you look at, you know, my turnaround rate and I'm basically shipping their order out within a couple of days, hopefully, you know, and if not, then I'll, I'll have a talk with them and, We'll, we'll discuss the specific date on when I'm going to ship out. But for the most part, man, I'm getting them in and out within a few days, you know? And so I got to really, that's why I go through so much food. On, on, on the norm, someone can feed twice a week, something like that. You know, I mean, sorry, twice a day, something like that. Once in the morning, once in the nighttime, and you're good. You know, if you want to feed the adult squashes, you can probably skip a day. And that squash will still be there if you even leave a little, a couple more chunks than normal, you know? And, and, the, um, and the squash is fine for the babies too. Yeah, they basically just. I, I I've seen mine just kind of you know line up on it, and um, yeah, so <laughs> go to town. Uh, yeah, and so they, yeah, they basically um, 
eat that. I use a, I use whatever is in bulk, cheapest, and you know most obviously most affordable as what I can buy, but the healthiest. You know, like I'm not just buying like a sack of potatoes. You know what I mean? Right. Um, we're not really feeding that way anymore. I'm trying to use a lot a lot better ingredients and um, and yeah, man. I just uh, that's the way I go. Sometimes I go to the store. Saturdays and Sundays, I try to hit up different farmers markets and try to buy good stuff. So, like when I'm tapping into the grocery store thing, it's like it's a headache. It, it's it's a uh, you know, it's sometimes they got it, sometimes they don't. Sometimes yes. the condition is great. Minute. Yeah, so it's but at the same time, it's the cheapest, and they're I get to deal with them one on one. Hopefully, they grew it, so it's like I kind of I kind of understand what they're trying to sell, you know. Um, the farmer's market, just because of how, you know, if you go to a farmer's market, things are organically grown and all produced probably by the person at the vendor that, that's vending the table, things like that, you know? Um, right. And yeah, so that's, that's what I've had to kind of do when you mentioned like organic vegetables, right? Or organic greens. Um, I've had to still technically do the same thing. It's just, uh, man, it's, it's, it's crazy. Cause if you get the wrong thing, they all die. You know, if you, if you get, right like someone with pesticides or they just finessed you to buy it, you know? And, um, you, cause I, sometimes I'm in a rush. I like, I gotta get these greens. Hopefully this person's there on the weekend and I can, I can buy at, at least two, two, three days worth of, of vegetables, store them, you know, things like that. If I can buy on a Saturday and Sunday, all those things, it probably will last me until like Tuesday, Wednesday, you know? Right. Um, yeah. And so, uh, they got to do things like that where it's like I'm almost fine chefing it, you know, buying the right the right ingredients for these for these damn bugs, bro. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. is there anything is there anything that you fed the grasshoppers that you recommend never feeding that you that you tried that you could recommend? Uh, yeah, them? like squishy fruits, you know, really like, like really mushy. Yeah, I don't like working with the mushy vegetables, the like the things that just end up. You know, yeah, yes. Yeah. So but I, but, squa I kinda, but squa squash is solid enough. Squash is solid. Is yeah, enough? yeah. And I, I kind of like what I do is I uh, either, you know, I cut it into chunks long ways, or I'll slice it up, or it really, it really just depends. Some sometimes I'm in a mood, bro, and they're just in bigger chunks, and they just I just spread them out on a dish. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, there's right. there's a lot to do, bro. And you know, and it really just depends. If I'm using dandelions, I'm spreading out the dandelions a little bit differently. Um, yeah, sometimes it's a mixture of all of it. If, if I feel like, oh, dang, like, you know, it's not enough or things like that. It's just a lot of food. It's a whole lot of food. Um, yeah. So, you, you know, mainly my, my mission behind the grasshoppers is to be able to give some to my green tree monitors and to actually my lace monitors yeah. just as like, you know, another piece of their diet. But let me ask you this. Well, I mean, not yet, because I mean, that's, that's what I want to ask you, because right now shit's fucking moving. Like I got to do they're, oh, they're, yeah. they're, com they're coming in. It's great. But at what point yeah. do I well, at what point am I safe to start taking grasshoppers out and feeding them off? That's what I want to know. Well, you've been you've been having babies, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, they're yeah, they're, those ones are already like growing up like it's yeah, it's yeah, they're, they're moving. So when when all right, I, I, I'm, I, I just don't because I, I know I kind of it's not that I know your schedule, but I know you're a busy guy. Right. Yeah. And so, honestly, how often are you feeding every day? Every dude, I I load them up in the morning. I load them up at night, just like you know. Okay. That's yeah. All right. So that's that's pretty good to grow a normal rate, right? Now, picture if you were to add one more time, or more so, you're just kind of really keep up with how you're gonna feed them when they right when they run out, right? Right. Right. Um. So it can sometimes, bro. It's every four hours for me, man, because I like like times like now. And there's a shoot. I was telling people like, hey, you gotta wait like a week or so, you know, like you gotta wait three or four days, and they're still piling up, you know. And so I gotta meet the demand. And so I can get babies to become feedable size in like 10 days, 14 days Whoa. from babies. Yeah, but that's that's me, you know, 24-7 in and then it's like I'm I'm up in the middle of the night. If you ever see me active online i'm i'm active almost all the hours of the day you know and, i catch uh, you i wake up early enough where i catch you where you're still up from the night before <laughs> yeah yeah still up still packing still prepping and i, I gotta do all the 
you know, customer service stuff. Like I do it all. I do it all. I, I try to, you know, try to do it all, bro. And I think, I think if someone time manages it enough and, you know, focuses enough, a, you can kind of do it all as long as you, I start off early. So if you miss hours in the day, you're going to be asked out with all that, all those questions and stuff like that, you know? I'm curious, Kai, like, so you said that you could get these grasshoppers with your experience to feedable size within about 10 days. What about to those adult sizes, like to where they're like so the fucking really, big ones? How, really how long big, did that take gonna, for you? That's that's going to be a month, a good a month, month right? to a month. But it, in, you know, in other people's, that's for me though. So in other people's cases, it might be almost two months or like six weeks, something okay. like that. You know, the males for sure, but the, the females are going to, they take a little bit longer to grow because they're that much bigger, right? And the, wait, so, I'm sorry, uh, okay. The female's the bigger one or smaller one? Which one's the female? I forget. The the, 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 the female's the bigger one. Oh, okay. It's typically, right. yeah, for this in uh, the species you have, it's the bigger one. So, um, and uh, yeah, man, it's really just, just like that where it's going to take a little bit longer to grow, um, but you got to really feed them a lot, though. You got to be on, on, on top of it. I, I like rarely, that. I rarely, they, they, I don't think there's ever a moment where they don't have anything to eat. Like I yeah. even, I even pull it out where it's still flimsy. Like it's not crispy. Yeah. It's just flimsy. And I'm yeah. always, I always keep it fresh. My only time I don't keep it fresh is when I'm not here. And that's a problem yeah. too, because my wife, unfortunately, she don't like, she, they just come out yeah. on her. And she don't like it. She gets pissed, you know, because I have it in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. So yeah, man, I guess uh, that, that, you know, the um my, my my recommendation would be to just uh just to stay on top of it i think once though you're gonna get to a, a point and that's still within that six week time right now right right and six weeks to two months okay my guy in that time you're gonna have too many big ones that you you're gonna not even know what to do with and then you're gonna have another rotation of babies and then another you know you'll with because you see them right now they're hatching probably they'll hatch and then they'll kind of slow down and maybe in a few more weeks they'll hatch again. And right. That's what you're kind of noticing now, right? You'll, you have slightly bigger ones and then you got really small ones, right? There, there are days in between. So, um, man, the picture when now the, the small ones you got and they're big, you'll have, you'll have so many, you're going to have so many. And then the, that question that you just asked me will be, really it, not really important at all just because you'll get to the point where they're just pile up you know and right. then you'll have that 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 rotation and then that rotation that's why i told you you can like you see your babies are all alive right they're not dying the oh, adults they're, they're, don't they're cracking, yeah, yeah they're so um, and, and and i have i have that other thing ready to go like i'm ready to like put something like put you know i, I mean by the way i, I was going to yeah. get into the next thing how how if i wanted to start another or D or, or another thing in a different, you know, rep the breeze or whatever. What do I pull out? I just pull out the adults or what do I do? Yeah. Just pull out the adults. Why would you start over? Right. You already have good, a good size adults, you know? I mean, you, you could start, start all the way from, from babies, but that'd be pointless. You just right. start one, start another colony. You're going to empty out this one. That one's going to still be cracking. You know, you kind of leave that one alone and let that one do its thing. Right. You still got one to abuse over here and utilize and pull from, so if if they were the case and you got overran in one cage, just just crack off another one. Now here's the thing, man. One thing that got me really pumped up to want to breed these grasshoppers is when I had Brandon Van Aston on my show, cold blooded uh, Canadian cold blood. You know who that is? A monitor breeder up in yeah. Canada. Shout out yeah, to Brandon. Yeah. But he was like, you know, he he told me how he was so heavy into just feeding strictly insects to his tree monitors now he's not going to yeah. feed no more rodents and you know he's telling me the amount of crickets he has to feed and i'm like well man you know I, i'm thinking how much more nutrition is in a grasshopper versus a cricket or am i tripping yeah what's, yeah well, what's I, I can get into that so yeah. um shoot uh all right so let's just say a, a medium inch size grasshopper is meat all the way from tip to tip because okay. like let's say if, if you compare a cricket, right? The cricket has a solid hard head. It's it's a, it's a, it's hard, you know. It's not soft and brainy. But the grasshopper's head, it's it's juice. You touch it, it starts to juice out. Um, so it's basically you know meat from one end to the other. Um, now comparable to like a big roach, the size of a big grasshopper, 
um, it's a lot less shell. So your chitin level and things like that are a whole lot less comparable to a uh, hissa roach that's the same size, you know, three, four inches like the grasshopper or like a very large dubia female. It's got a lot of shell, you know, so the grasshoppers has less shell and um, yeah, more meat to, in ratio, right? Now, um, your uh, usage and things like that, they're going to be running after these things. And I, I don't know if you've seen it already, but basically these animals develop a whole feeding response to these grasshoppers, you know, and how they eat them and things like that. So that, that exercise there is also a good, a good added to what they're normally like, right? Um, they're rich in like vitamin A helps. Um, and I, I believe vitamin A is great to help reptiles in, pr in production, um, egg production and things like that. So, um, you know, let's see what else here. Uh, and I just have like other comparisons, like, you know, they don't really smell or they don't chirp, things like that. But as far as like, um, man, a, a whole nutritional sheet, I got to really pull that up. Um, and I don't have one on me right now, but for so the good. most part, though, it's just a, a, just a lot healthier, more normal mm -hmm. food item for some of these, uh, some of these animals that are, that are eating typical crickets and roaches, you know? Now, like what would be like, preferably the amount you'd want to give at a time. Like for instance, like with my tree monitors compared to my lace monitors, like, well, how many would you offer them? Uh, well, the lace session? monitors, the lace monitors will eat a bunch and it might right. be more fun to really watch than getting o overly full on, you know, which is um, so, so what you're saying, once I'm overload, I could be like, here, fucking go to town and they could just, yeah, just okay. That's kind of fun. Right. Get so that's, know. that's <laughs> fun. Right. And it's, it's uh don't don't get me wrong they will get a meal out of it and they will they'll get a whole bunch of exercise chasing them down things like that um but it's you know for a big old lace a, a grasshopper isn't a whole lot right it, i mean it, my, my my big guys chase them too dude even my i got a i got a couple really big mangroves that are a good four feet and they still love to chase the grasshoppers whenever i throw them in there um nice. now for your tree monitors and they're adults and they can definitely eat the big ones so you, you probably really only need to feed like three or four if anything because each, each of big. them yeah each of them right and it's it's a good amount of food you know even if they only ate two and let's say they ate two females that's that's a pretty good meal um if it, it, i mean in size look at it it's about the length of a good hopper if not an adult mouse right and well, dude, it's not dude, they, you know, they love they love them bro like they fuck right. like the thing i i have a really shy female the only thing she takes off the forcep is a grasshopper and yeah and, and, and i'm like wow you know what i mean so, yeah and it's a it's a whole natural thing i'd say with uh with the with the with the grasshoppers and these arboreal lizards like i was trying, I'm trying to mention when you're thinking about it crickets and roaches there aren't very many arboreal species of roaches and uh, if anything, they're like in the lower level, right? Just kind of uh, into bushes and things like that. And then the crickets are, are mostly um, very terrestrial animal too, especially the ones that we're offering for food, you know? They're uh, you know, a burrowing type of roach. And then the crickets, they just live in the cracks in the grounds in between the rocks and stuff like that. Even the, the black crickets or the banded crickets or whatever, you know, <coughs> they're more terrestrial. And so these tree monitors or chameleons or arboreal species of lizards, um, things like that, aren't, aren't normally going to be eating um, those food items. And um, so katydids, walking sticks, praying mantises, spiders, um, grasshoppers, are, you know, bee and bees, things like that, where uh, those would be a lot more nutritious and a more typical diet for those arboreal lizards. And that's where I think the whole trigger I have, I've had people that, you know, they, they, everybody, you know, happens to do it and they, they buy imports and these imports don't really adapt too well, or they got a, there's, it's just a hard time acclimating them and they don't really want to eat, you know? And so you're scared that it's going to die on you and whatnot. And um, people end up using these grasshoppers, man, as like a, almost like a last resort thing. And it, it helps out. I mean, just like you, you said this female won't take anything else off forceps, but the grasshopper she will. You know, no, I've no had, problem. Uh, 
Yeah, I've had uh, Catherine Brown who just messaged me this morning, and she's got a, a, a really picky female too that she's got to get back up to, I guess, wait for other, you know, I think she's got this with the male, and she wants to just make sure it's continually eating. And so she just picked up some more grasshoppers for them. Um, you know, and it's, I got this, uh, I don't know if you've seen that, um, um, that person that I guess someone gave her, gave her to take care of a blind tree monitor, right? It was, it was born blind with no eyes. Right. What? And so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's nuts. I don't know, but I guess, you know, he didn't want to kill it or the person that produced it didn't want to kill it. And so right. let somebody else just raise it as a pet, you know, a loving pet. And, um, and this thing wouldn't eat. And then she held grasshoppers by its mouth on like a, on a couple rotations of trying to feed feed the, the whole tree monitor and get it to basically live, right? Because it was technically kind of not doing too well. Um, and so it was, it's eating grasshoppers now, bro. And it's it's uh, it's kind of crazy how it just clicks. You know, it just it just clicks for them. People with Parsons chameleons, people with imported females that don't want to eat at all, things like that. Uh, um, these uh, I got this guy that has that's got a lot of hor not horned lizards, but he's got like Asian type of uh, tree dragons, <laughs> right? Right. Um, uh, he he uses those a lot for his stuff, and um, yeah, they're just they're not doing too well at all on on his cricket and roach diet, you know. So yeah, now, man, it's, it's crazy. I've seen different species of of grasshoppers that you've worked with. Are you still tapped into a bunch of different species, or are you just really dialed yeah. in with the species that are selling? No, I gotta I gotta kind of always keep uh, um, diversity. It's, it's 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 not just you know the ones that just sell. We do this. We we try to make sure that we still do it for fun, you know. Um, That's good. And so it's like, sure, the money is is awesome or whatever or business is great or you know i i, I don't even want to get into that like really because the business is awesome like for both me and dean we're basically kind of trying to get as many species as we can to learn them all um some stuff we travel the united states for um you know and catch them ship them back some stuff we you know pay people to do where they're basically finding stuff in their yard or when you know when they go netting and stuff like that um and I try to stay on top of which ones are which which ones are great to deal with, which ones aren't so good, which which ones are toxic, uh, which ones um, you know produce well, which ones are spastic and you don't want to work with them, or you know they die so easily they can't eat anything other than what they were eating in the wild. Do we? I I, I we end up with you know throughout the year. Or throughout the last couple years, we've we've added on probably a good ten species to the roster for sure. Damn, um, yeah. So that's that's on top of the few that we had going already. Um, and then, yeah, man, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's it's. I don't know how to say it other than it's been difficult, but I try to still keep it where it's triggering our mind with non-stopping and you know it's like sure i got found a couple good species but uh, you know there's more there's probably more out there there's probably more things or or it's just stuff like that you know yeah. you're keeping it fun basically is what you're doing. yeah i gotta it's gotta stay fresh bro it's uh, as much as I'd, i love like damn this it's it's cool i don't you know I, don't, I should i don't have to get other species but um i still do because it's always refreshing you know it's not it's not the same shit you you, you really um are staying uh, on top of like new things that you're learning um shit when it gets to the point where you're not doing anything anymore then it gets boring you know what i mean um right. and i feel like then the game stops a little bit for you and or or just the whole fact of dan there's there's more that you could learn or or shoot as, as far as we go I think about it. We're we've been investing in it, you know, just traveling the United States, traveling up and down California, finding new species, shoot, all that stuff like that. So I, I never thought it'd be where it is, um, and it, it, it's cool, man. There's there's a lot of species to work with. There's a shit ton of grasshoppers out there. It just some aren't really pleasant. Some are 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 cool to work with, and we're just trying to weave out which ones aren't. Has there ever been like any kind of like pop up 
grasshopper breeding company since you've came around? Like, are you seeing anybody trying to like do their own thing since you started pushing stuff out? I don't know if that's ever, you um, know, if that's, dang, that's bro. Um, you know, what's crazy. I, I get this all the time. Right. And, um, I think so. I, I, I and what's, you know, some people try to put it where it's like a bad thing. Like, I'm just like, nah, bro, I kind of, I, I probably started that, you know, yeah, um, I sold it to them and, and I got them, you know, got them going on their own little thing or they, you know, they sell to shows or I got a few, you know, sure. There's me and Dean. Right. But even, even Dean, he's, he, he's producing just his normal amount. Nothing crazy. Like not where, where he's like shipping out like a hundred boxes a week or 50 boxes a week, you know, it's just, just as, just as normal customers. He likes, he's super in, into it for fun. You know what I mean? Like, there's always new species. We're always trying to go to the next thing. He's really eager on that part. You know, I'm just there. We we help fund this stuff. We decide on how who's going to do what. Um, and um, and yeah, man, I can't really be upset if you know someone wants to get their own thing going or take care of their own customers or 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 whatnot. You know, it's I mean, just it's, because it's, I sold it to them. I can't really be upset because I sold it to them. You know. It's it's how this world works, you know what I mean? Something yeah, gets yeah. really somebody comes out with something, they're good at it. You know, there's going to be another version. Look at Pepsi and Coke. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's like you know, um, and at this point, I feel like with the whole, you know, the lanes and everything like that, man, I'm not trying to be greedy because there's a million motherfuckers out there, and I can't sell to a million. You know, <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not going to do that. You know, there's there's a lot of lizards to feed, and you'll always have lizards to feed. You know, and and people are gonna do their thing you know and and sure man it's like so true okay just try not to step on my toes too much you know but as far as the most part man you got your customers you could you know serve them things like that that's great to love it love to hear a little shout out but dang i don't force that out of people you know just if i if i ask them and if they do it they do it if they don't they don't you know um but up. man i can't be upset because i'm out here selling these breeder groups you know i'm off here out here offering my help i'm i'm trying to literally get it to the point where grasshoppers are so common that they're no longer a a, a bad a bad thing you know what i mean right. um, i'm trying to get people more and more over the the stigmas of them or the myths of you know they're they're completely illegal in a sense they're you know they're illegal if you don't have permits and the right permits and what you're trying to do with them and sales and things like that that's illegal but you know, if you do it the right way, man, that's where I keep on trying to have and encourage people. All right. You know, if you're going to do it and you're going to try to resell it at your shop or whatever, I really recommend that you get permitted. So that way, if they do come at you and it's you're, you're protected, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, some people it's it's it's, it's, it's crazy, man. I, I just uh, I just want the process to go, but in the right way at the same time, you know get people right. accustomed to everything and that's what i'd like it to get to be where they don't even blink an eye you know I, i've had i've had it where um <laughs> we're still getting searched and we're still getting regularly um get we get regular visits you know what i mean both both me and dean on on, on what, like, wi like what, wildlife wildlife rangers and shit or what yeah 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 they this usda and things like that and and wow. california and so, you know, they come by, they look at the facility, make sure things clean and, uh, you know, just like, just like anything else, uh, clean and there's, there's no escaped grasshoppers and they take pictures of our logs and stuff like that. And the, the, the grasshoppers and, you know, they jiggle some stuff around and then they kind of go, you know, um, right. but, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pain for, for them to steal to still have them come you know what i mean but they got to do what they got to do man as long as as long as i'm in the lines there's like not grasshoppers all over the room or outside or it's you know it's not some crazy mess i think they're okay um i'm hoping that that's that's all it is and that's where like like i was trying to say it i hope nobody is messing up where it kind of messes it up for everybody else you get what i'm saying like i just right. i didn't want like some guy to even myself and I, I talk to other states and I talk to other USDA, um, like, I guess the representatives and who, who, right. when they, who you should call, right? And I ask them about it. They're just, 
as far as a very large building, it's never really been done because you got to have to go through so much, right? There's a lot of the permitting. You're literally opening up a whole, technically a bunch of plagues if they all got loose. You know what I mean? Um, in right. California or, or in many states in the United States, farming is is a thing still. You know, farming is very important still. It's, it's a thing where now it's even more because the necessity and it not being there um, has drawn up the demand for vegetables and then you know the water droughts and things like like in california right yeah um, you know it's there's a, there's a, the whole drought thing and the crops all that stuff like that probably isn't going to be grown well enough and then there's a shortage or things like that so for them to risk that that's a that's the thing that they've talked to me about where um you know it basically it's got to be really contained it's got to be controlled stuff like that so they're cool about it don't get me wrong they're not like they're not dicks about it but it's just uh yeah man i gotta be on top of uh, my p's and q's you know <laughs> which is a good thing I got a lot, yeah i got a lot going on with them that's that's the thing it's not just like one or two cages it's a whole ass room you know right respect now i gotta ask you man because we're in the same boat we live in cali not an easy place to live when you're self-employed and you're doing things on your own. It's an expensive place. Taxes are high. I mean, look at these damn permits we're talking about. So are you even considering maybe, you know, another move? If it's just blowing up so big and, and it, you know, because it's almost hard to do things here, you know. But do you ever feel like maybe you yeah. should move the operation somewhere better? Uh, I, I have. And actually, that's just uh, – it's not exactly fully in motion yet. It's really just now figuring out the right movements uh, and right, right basically the right facility that'll support it um you know i've been basically just been thinking about like a warehouse with tents or things like that but i don't know if that's going to be really good enough um and so i don't know how how wide or how big they want me to grow that's the thing is is um damn i'd hate for them to to knock me on that so i haven't done the full jump yet just because sure i can get any room but dang if i if i can't be legit about it and go full blown because, you know, once you get to that point, it's like the, the being legit is very important, you know? You have to. Yeah, you're not going to last. Yeah, so you're not going to last. So I want to be able to be on top of my stuff with, with it and then basically make sure that I'm, I'm okay with uh, the, the move. Don't get me wrong. I've, you know, I haven't been going on no trips or buying nothing special, man, or anything like that. I've just been saving all my money, bro, and trying to just stack up for that right move, you know? Yeah. Um, and so it could be another just where we get our own, you know, our own crib. And then it's just a whole nother room just like that. And that's cool for me, bro. That's, that's enough. You know, that's all, that's all, that's a whole lot of work already. If you, if you want to think about it, cause that's where I'm at right now. Right. Um, it's just not all in one room. It's divided into other parts of the house and other parts of the, of the, the property too. And so it's technically just spaced out all over just because that's how I got to work it. Right. Um, but eventually all that can just fit in one room and take up almost all four walls, you know, floor to ceiling. And I'd like to do floor to ceiling and then in the center. That's the where that's when I'm looking at it and I think about it. I'm like, all right, what can I handle? What can me and two or three people handle, you know, throughout the week, things like that and run it just like that. Yeah, I just I just know how many challenges are ahead trying to do what we would love to do in a place like cali you know what i'm saying especially the way if you want yeah. to grow it's it, it's hard it's almost it's it, almost to where it like is. bro like you almost you're almost pushed to where you should move i mean places like right. georgia fucking illinois they don't deal with that shit and that's why you know that company timberline look how huge timberline is right and they're out of illinois and you know it's yeah. just it just it's just own, own, damn near when it comes to making money off animals especially it's reptiles hard. And, you know, it's yeah. hard bro in cali they yeah. don't like it yeah. I don't know how you do it, and so that's you, you got all those animals, but that's a property that your your OGs own, or or no, you guys no, no. That? Yeah, so I I rented this place six years ago with my you know with my wife. She was my girlfriend at the time, and we moved in. Yeah. And the la the lady who owns this is like a farm lady. She lives probably about fifteen minutes in like farm deep farmland where she's at, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've just been lucky to be in here. She's super cool with the animals. She's seen me grow from like four snakes to all this. Um, but the thing is, I still need to grow and, and I don't own the house. And because of COVID, she ain't trying to sell it anymore. So now we're just like, fuck, you know, buying a house right now anywhere is goddamn fucking good luck, you know? Yeah, we're waiting for it to crash. So hopefully we'll see. Yeah, hope, yeah hopefully. So, and at, at this, that with that, 
that's where we're, we're, we're trying to make our moves. Hopefully we'll have enough and I'll understand how to buy, buy a house. I'm still like, you know, just coming out. Brutal. Like I'm still like fresh on learning that stuff, you know, the numbers yeah, and, brutal. And, how, and yeah. So just, just learning, just learning it alone. And, um, you know, being mature enough to freaking study all that or, or even it's like a, it's like there's so many things you got to learn, bro, that you you, 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 you don't you won't get one thing right. Should you fall into a mess, bro? And so, uh, yeah, I, I really want to just be able to take what I got, run with it, try to, you know, I'm not spending my money, but at the same time, it's it's not like it's not doing anything. It's just sitting there right now. You know what I mean? And I'm waiting to the point where, shoot, all right, can I – What's the next move for me? That's 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 a question I always ask myself every day. Like, all right, what's it gonna look like? Because it's already grown this much in the last two three years, right? What's it gonna grow like in another year, another year, year right. and a half? Or the demand is crazy right now. Because I run out every week, and I I run out where I gotta tell people, hey, you gotta wait a few days. You know, that's what I consider running out. They don't have to really wait too much longer than a week or so. But for the most part, man. I sell out every week and, um, you know, I want to get to the point where I don't got to tell people you got to wait at all. You know, you put in the order, I'll try to get it out within the next day. That's, that's my goal is to have no lead time, cut, cut, cut right to the chase is like, all right, we'll, we'll try to get you in the very next day. The only, only days I don't ship bro. And it's Sunday. Cause I, I still ship on Thursday too for California boxes so mm -hmm. they can make it to any all all the destinations by the weekend, you know, and right. then mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. But it's 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 a it's a tricky thing, man. In California, dude, because I don't know. I just I wish it would be so simple. And I and I where I live though is different, right? So I mean, I live maybe 20, 30 minutes from LA in like West Covina area, right. um, and I live in like the the industrial area still. So by the railroads and all that stuff like that, where they storage everything. Okay. Um, and so the, 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 the property out here isn't so bad compared to some other places. I know San Diego has gone up a lot though. It's gone up. A, it's gone up a grip, man. So yeah. So, yeah. And then you live in a nice area too. You live in a decent place and it's, it's, it's up, you know, it's, it's all up. up. It's all yep. up. And it's all up. And so, um, but where I'm at, man, I, I I don't know. It's it's not as it's not as bad when I'm looking around. And sure, it's it's. I would never thought I'd get to this point, bro. Because I used to just you know live like paycheck to paycheck type deal, right. where you know you'd be like a paycheck away from being broke, bro. It's and, a normal uh, Cali life. It ain't cheap yeah, here, bro. Yeah. It's not easy to be here. People don't understand. You know, and and I was just doing like flipping someone's roaches or. Or buying stuff and flipping it to somebody else, or, or getting good deals and flipping those things. That's why I was, how I was kind of existing for the last like ten years in the in the hobby. Before that, I was doing pet store stuff, things like that, you know. So it's like, um, getting to it and trying to survive. And now where I'm at now, it's I never thought I'd get to this point, you know, where right. dang I can I can think about it and I talk to the bank lady about getting my own crib one day. You know, it's like that. Like, I never thought I'd be going to the bank and Bro, some sitting grown up sitting, yeah, sitting down and like, oh shit, like that's actually <laughs> in the picture. When <laughs> I, was, I had a, I had a, oh, I had like fifteen hundred on me. Like, dang, what am I gonna do with this fifteen hundred? You know, like, what a blessing. And, uh, yeah, bro. So yeah, man, it's 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 a blessing, but it's also been like, you know. Um, I had to be strict on myself like crazy. You know, I had to. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 I'm, and I'm and I'm, and I'm sure, know? bro. I'm sure growing up, Kai, it's probably it's probably hard to be strict on yourself because how much you want to do what you want to do. But you you love yeah. these animals, you love these animals too much, bro. I you are so yeah. tapped in with what you're doing, you won't let nothing fuck that up, even yourself. That's how I am yeah, right now. Yeah. Like I only be able to keep this shit because how much I want to keep this shit. You know, like yeah, exactly. I won't let nothing fuck this up. I'm very protective of this, and I even I dude, I can easily check myself now because of all this. It's it's crazy. Yeah, and I I be checking myself too. Like, hey, bro, like, sure, it's not where, you know, it's not where you it's not where you're at and where you see yourself in five years. But damn, uh, look at where you at now, and look at where you were three years ago. Like, I was just thinking about it today, bro, because I I got this memory right. And uh, of this, you know, Facebook memory and shit, and it, it, 
it was when I left the Bay three years ago, like to the day today, right? Three years ago. Right. And, um, and I was just thinking about Jang. I had one grasshopper cage growing and it wasn't even anything more than it was like 20 grasshoppers, bro. That's all I had, you know, came yeah. down here with the, came down here with a dream, moved to LA County, bro. And just, just didn't stop, man. When, even when I was working at reptile factory, I was hustling on my phone, you know, or, and, um, when I was, uh, just getting here, not even knowing, Oh shoot, do I got to get a job? Am I just going to do the grasshopper thing and hope it explodes? And, uh, you know, just slowly working it in, bro. And now I'll, I, I don't, I don't, I don't work a nine to five no more. You know, I work twenty four seven for myself. But, but, but um, I mean, yeah, that, and that's yeah. listen, that, that's that's what people don't understand. Like, you have to be willing to work twenty four seven if you are going to go for working with yourself. And if you're not willing to work twenty four seven, then you 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 better off just sticking to a nine to five because that's yeah, more bro. that's more secure. There's no security in what we do, bro. Everything relies on our hustle, on our work. That's it. So that's what so, I'm saying. It's hard, it's hard to sleep sometimes. You feel me? Yeah. When you see me awake at nighttime, man, just know that I'm just <laughs> thinking about being, 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 being responsible, bro. Like, sure, yeah. man. Like, you can't be sleeping. I, yeah, I got sick, right? And I got sick with COVID, yeah, I damn. think, like, Heavy. two, three weeks ago, right? And I finally caught it after dodging it for three years, homie, for real. No. <laughs> hey, man. So that thing, that thing <laughs> beat me up, bro, right? And oh, I yeah, was so, good. like... Hey, and I was still grinding, still shipping out boxes every day. St- like, sure, maybe not as many, but I was still making sure that I was tapping into orders every day on what I can handle, right? And then, bro, I was having hot sweats, cold sweats, all up in that sh- like in the room. You know what I mean? Like, because it's hot, right? The room's hella right. hot. Right. And I'm just, dude. I don't. I was like, I don't know how how I'm even doing this, bro. Ants got into my shit. Ants got wow. into like a like nest bins and and i was just sitting there like i got i'm sick i don't know how i'm gonna deal with this but Damn. i gotta move the nest bin now i gotta take out all this soil dude i was sick as hell too just doing it and um yeah you you know when you work when you work for yourself there's there's no excuse not even if you're sick as shit dude there's almost no excuse you know um, and that's where that's that's what it takes, man. It it takes that like that hard ass grind to, to try to get it up off the floor. You know, the shit that they don't want to do, that's what you're doing, bro. That's what you're doing. You know, you gotta be relentless. You gotta be unstoppable. You yeah, know what I mean? No, no matter what it is, and you know, and yeah. life is gonna hit you. Damn, you know, fuck. I got COVID. I remember that sucked. But you know, I go having to walk around after this monitor bite, bro. This monitor bite I went through with my foot like a fucking goddamn balloon. That was probably one of the worst times I've ever had to do snake chores was being in that kind of pain, you know, because what are you going to yeah. do? Like, I, w- I would like I, I remember, you know, I remember here um, we're about to get into this next topic real quick, but I've gotten so many times with people offering to want want to help me. But I don't like that. I, I feel like I feel like yeah. you're going to more likely fuck something up and I don't need to. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> if if I'm going to like get mad, I'd rather get mad at you're myself. Mad at me. Yeah. I fucked up. Yeah. I will go in on you. You don't want me to go yeah, in on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, bro, that's that San Diego. That's that San Diego temper, bro. I gotta fucking watch that shit. <laughs> I, mean, I got it too, bro. It's like I, I was just born this way. But um, I gotta ask you, man. Are you pressed at all to have to maybe look at getting employees at some point? Where, where you at? Yeah, with that? yeah. Because I, I, I know realistically, I couldn't do it all. You know, uh, right. once it got to the point where damn, who's going to handle all the sales that come in? You know, right. that alone, huge you know, piece. when you got a, when you, what happened? That's a huge yeah, piece. When, yeah. Yeah. When you got to make sure that you got to manage the sales and then, all right, sure. I can do that. But then who's also going to do everything else. So right now what I'm doing is basically I take every task and I tap it into an hour and I, I, you know, I can, I complete it. If, if it's something that I do, it's it, it moves all along, and if I if I don't do that stuff and I don't make sure that I'm um, scred- scheduled out throughout the whole like, dude, sometimes there's a thing to do every fucking hour on the clock, twenty four seven, you know, and so and I'll I'll probably give myself a few hours of, of a nap, but for the most part, man, I space out everything, and I do everything on my own or is like me and my lady doing some stuff, you know. And really, that's it, man. I got to make sure that I advertise at certain hours of the day for the East Coast, for the West Coast. Like, think about how I'm going to 
you know, talk to people. That's why I'm up hella early so I can get East Coast people when they're awake. You know, yeah, Shoot, I'm up before them because yeah, because if you're not, man, you, you you're I'm missing out on possible sales when they're they're freshest. You know what I mean? When they get into busy work and they don't want to deal with me, bro. You know, but yeah. when I when I get them and I can uh, talk to talk to people, is basically start early. You know what I mean? But I space out all the all the other stuff that I have to do now um, throughout the day, and I just make sure that I give an hour to it or or complete the task and then get right to the next thing. You know, um, but yeah, man, I've had to think about it because I can't leave and do people invite me places and you know I'm not only am I missing out on my normal life stuff like people invited me to weddings or baby showers and shit i want to go see you know i want to go see the baby and stuff like that right and i can't <laughs> really? because because i'm busy right but dude there's also um networking ability that i'm missing out when people invite me to shows you know people invite me to shows yeah, you know, you're missing you anaheim bro i, I was yeah. gonna see you at anaheim yeah and uh and I, I was like man i actually that's what i was kicking myself in the foot i was like even though you didn't have grasshoppers to sell bro or you didn't feel like it, you probably should have just hung out more. But I was there quick, though. I was there quick on Sunday, and then I okay. dipped, you know. Um, but uh, I just came, I dropped off some orders. People ordered grasshoppers, and then I uh, picked up some cork bark, and then I dipped. But, right. um, yeah, man, I was kicking myself in the foot, too, because I was – a bunch of people wanted to see me. They wanted to basically, um, you know, talk about grasshoppers themselves or the monitor stuff, too, because there's – there's a lot that I, you know, do the sure people know me for the grasshopper stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that I do for the monitor stuff too. Um, and that's, uh, that's, that's a whole, whole another, whole another world, man, that, um, I've almost, I don't even know if I've, I haven't trying to take a break from it. Don't get me wrong. I'm still doing right. the monitor stuff, but it's just, yeah. Like I was telling you, I've had to kind of pick and choose, you know? between the grasshoppers and the monitor stuff. And um, on the day-to-day, -day, on the day-to-day, -day, everyday tasks throughout the day, it's the grasshoppers that take over majority. Because the monitors, I can, you know, I've, I, I've changed their water every other day. I feed them every other day. And that's kind of it. But it's only really a whole lot of work when I got to dig through all the nest bins. And those are other tasks, you know what I mean? But right. uh, that that itself, though, too, it's uh, – it's uh it's I can I can space it out a few times a week, tend to them, and they're okay, you know. Well, it's just like people who breed snakes and fucking the rodents, you know what I'm saying? Like the ro the rodents take so much of the really hard work and grind, you know what I mean? And people yeah. almost look at working out their snakes as like a goddamn paradise thing, like they that's the therapy, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, the yeah. whole rodents is a grind, you know, like that shit's really backbreaking. That that shit yeah. sucks. Like, let's just say I that. used to do rodents too, bro. I used to have a when I was uh, 18, um I, and this guy was getting out of a pet store and I basically bought it from him, right? Me and my mom bought it from him. And um, we had two rat barns, two rat shipping containers that we called the barns, one for mice, one for rats. Okay. And that was, a, that was a lot. That was a lot of work. And I realized then, too, it's like, man, that, that's yeah, it's not, not meant for me, man. It's just it's a killer. It's it uh, the, the smell is a killer. Bro, and I'm just saying, I've been in a few rat barns, and let me just say, you get smacked in the fucking forehead yeah. every time by the aroma. And I'm just all I can think about the people who work in there every day. And I'm yeah, like, you can't, kick, you can't kick it in there. You're like, you can't, you can't be in there. there. I'm like, unless you're yeah. fucking all hazmasked out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But and listen, I'm not nothing against whoever works in those. But God bless, man. I'd be plugging up. I, I don't know. I, I would, yeah, I'd, no, it's a silent, it's a silent killer. You know that. Uh, but I'm, yeah. I think it's ammonia in the air with the piss and stuff like that on a really so, bad hot day. Fuck. Trip out. All right. So I have. I always. I told this story back in the day. Like what really got me into reptiles, and I had this uncle. This fucking. He was like got really into the '60s and kind of got out there. But he had mad money, and he had a bunch of animals, ostriches, wild boars. He was in the import game. I don't know if it was the legal import game, but he had a lot of the crazy shit, right? So it turns out, you know, I went to go visit back east, and it turns out that he died like a few years ago. And they ran tests, and I guess he died from breathing in so much animal shit throughout the years. And they like they did tests and saw that there was all this like animal feces like stuff in his lungs, like, and that's what killed him. And I was like, holy shit! He was a grimy guy too. Like this motherfucker was dirty. I I, I remember visiting him, and I was like, oh my god! As a kid, I didn't want to be around him too long. So, but I'm yeah. just saying, like that that right there was always like, dude, you gotta be like 
careful what you breathe in and like this shit is a silent killer well you know even 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 with your own animals you should be clean you know what i'm saying yeah yeah um man okay I, i've seen some collections you know old school guys right they right. basically just let the dust and all that stuff like that pile up the rodent the rodent dust the sawdust dust yeah, it's just, just is there for years or whatever you know i'm like dude that'll kill you man <laughs> and um <laughs> Yeah, I've I've seen it. I I've I've had to help a bunch of guys in my time where they're getting out of it, or this lady, her husband died, and I had to go over and move out dozens of lizards or dozens of animals, and it's like, dang, right. how did you let it get this bad? So when we clean every week, and sometimes we clean twice twice a week here, right? Because I got to clean that much just to be on. I, I like. Because I also have asthma, so I like to be on a certain level of cleanliness, even if I got a lot of shit. That means I got to clean more, you know? And so I, I'm all the way up there at the, at the very top of all the cages, getting all the spider webs, all those things like that, man. And it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing that, like, every week because it just, it just collects, you know? It yeah, does, but especially when it sits there. Like, anything that just sits there is going to collect something. That's just how it works. Yeah. Um, so it's good to have those kind of habits right off the bat. You know what I'm saying? Because it, you know, you yeah, you're, you're not gonna do yourself you wrong. You don't want to be a, a a mess. It just it's just more to take care of later. It's not great for your health. It's not good when you're looking at your collection and it's like, damn, this is, this is dusty. <laughs> and if it's anything, bro, like one thing that taught me how you you know you shouldn't be lazy is when I started working with monitors because monitors like. You don't you yeah. can't change your water. You can't change your water once a week. And and like I, I already knew changing your water once a week for a snake was fucked up. Like I always yeah. thought, dude, you have to give it more fresh water than that. But then knowing how intelligent these monitors are and how they fucking are alert to you, you just kind of yeah. earn a different type of respect for the reptile. And you know how important it is of their needs. You know what I'm saying? Fresh water, how they eat, all sorts of shit matters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I gotta give mine fresh water, especially out of the cups. And out of their drinking containers every day and then right. i change their bigger bins like three times a week four times a week if i you know in a, in a, and i i really got i don't really have a bunch of things to do i'll change their waters a lot more often but a, every time after they eat man they wash their face they you know rub them clean and it's right. like man if they didn't have that they'd just be just they just ate a whole bunch of food and they're just parched you know right um, fucked and up. i gotta That's keep a mine yeah, I gotta keep mine really hydrated, um, just yeah. because I don't have a lot of lot of large water features. It's just a big bin that they can get in and out of, you know, right? Right. Um, but I gotta make sure that they drink the cleaner water because they're they've already messed up that big water. Um, right. I even also on a on a normal tip, what I do is I get like hopper mice or I get a uh, an adult mouse and I I inject the hell out of it with uh, with water uh, nice. water sometimes liquid calcium and uh that'll that'll allow them to have water content enter their their mouth and everything like that without even drinking sometimes monitors you know they'll, they'll just like really shy tree monitor she's gonna eat or they're gonna eat and then go right back into the hide they're not really gonna go and look for stuff like that so in in cases where the animals are extremely shy um, that's important man that's that's a great looking pair that I got together right now, man. I still have them together. What do you, I got to ask you, Kai, what do you owe a lot of your breeding success to? Like what, what was something that you kind of switched up or something you realized that helped your monitor game? Shit. All right. Um, okay. So I draw out everything on a calendar. So if you're paying attention, like you're talking about breeding, right? Or breeding, right? Yeah, because um, look, basically, yeah. like, check it out. Like, you know, Mac Dre and Alice, they're 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 about to get to that age. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, I, I wanted to hear kind of uh, what what you did when you approached your uh -huh. monitors going for the first time breeding and whatnot. So, you want to go through the motions before you start to pinpoint the timing, right? right. So that 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 timing is important, but you want to go through the at least getting them used to each other and or they are already used to each other. So they're caged together, right? Um, right, right. Yep. And so, and how old are they now? A year? So they, yeah. So, but over over a year. So they, I mean, Mac Mac was born in January, and then Alice was born in March. So okay, so they're only yeah. a few months apart, but basically the same age, right? Same age. Okay. Right. Um, I guess I would say when they're probably into their maybe maybe they need to turn two and three years old to 
to reach really good maturity. Some of them don't really always mature at a year old. You know, that's not true for every monitor. It really just right. depends. Um, so let's say when they get into the section maturity, they may start acting different towards each other. Because are they mounting each other now? No, no, she mounts. She mounts him. Like she's like kind of like the one that's always all over him. And it's but like she more. Does, what about like the one that pins the other one and then locks the tail there's like no, that? No? There's no pinning. None of that shit going on at whatsoever. Right, so, yeah, you're probably not there yet, or they maybe need some space from each other to miss each other, and you okay. might have to. You might have to make it intriguing for the other one basically right. change things around right um you could separate them for a couple months if you need to things like that while you're separating them you've decreased the food in both of their diets that way you can take kill two birds with one stone in this case and then let them go through the normal basically uh, less food less humidity a little bit less heat and then when you introduce them back to each other, you're basically picking all that stuff up a little bit before that introduction. So, and, and that would that would kind of that, that would kind of be like the, that would be kind of going like through the season. So, like summertime would be the ideal time to separate them, and then going into the winter, you'd want to or no, or is it the other way around? Um, yeah, it, it actually okay. So, uh, for me, I think it's easily manipulated, manip, manipulatable, right? Where <laughs> I can control them by what i've been doing right for the breeding part so if for example um just this last year and I, i'm actually introducing two breeding seasons into this year taking taking advantage of of they're breeding a lot and laying eggs a lot all winter november december january february all winter right and so i had to stop them and so i stopped them for march april may june and then june like mid-june is when i started getting the temperatures back up but the temperatures naturally were going back up so those three or four months i cut out their diet i i went from three to four times a week to only one time a week feeding and just a little bit just to maintain diet just to maintain health nothing to get them overly fat on and then i was using like fish and bugs and shrimp instead of mice chicks and eggs so you see i have a lean diet while they're not really being fed a lot and then i have a, a heftier diet for when i want to trigger and give them more fat more calories to develop those eggs and so that might be a trigger that you might have to do with your all your monitors if you're trying to breed them because i know you got other other monitors too and then yeah. you can tap it make it where you do the tree monitors and the the lace monitors all at the same time because you follow the, the pattern same right. right like so like let's say if when snake snake guys stop feeding a whole lot in august september october and then they get to crack in and start feeding in november and december right they try they're trying to breed then right right they're kind of going to be doing the same thing now the southern hemisphere for you know australia and indonesia and all that stuff out there right their dry season is now right summertime so there's yeah and it's it's what's weird is they have less clouds so the humidity dissipates a lot faster and it's just that's that's really it there's less rain clouds and there's no over forecast so it doesn't keep the humidity up it's actually the humidity is what's making it warm all the time so when those clouds escape it's also their coldest nights of the year right uh, i learned this by talking to other Indonesian people and also uh, Danny Gorman of Albino uh, Albino Salvatore. Um, Respect. And yeah, so just uh, if you're going to copy this one and do the Southern Hemisphere, you try to going to you're, you're going to really try not to be doing a whole lot of breeding now and then right. you're going to be doing breeding later on. But for me, I was like I was saying before, I'm just manipulating it now and controlling the time frame, and I'm actually just choosing whenever. But it happens to just match up with the weather. So um, this last year, or sorry, this last six months, I've been getting them back up to weight, or you know, feeding them a lot more. I've already got a couple clutches since I've started. Right. So 
you know it's basically that's what you're trying to do is you you can almost do it where it's just a few weeks and it just a random few weeks that you decided to do let's say you got two floodlights in you turn one off you cut the diet for like three or four weeks bro and bring everything back up and then introduce them and just like that it could it could, it could trigger. Work out just like that the trigger yep and uh right. wow. and it's it's not having a whole lot of food and then having a lot of food with the humidity and the heat back up so and obviously the maturity of her being ready for it right right and if your animals are now just really learning each other they've grown up together but they haven't you know they haven't gone through those motions yet you're probably still premature in the whole process right so it could just be one day where they all of a sudden start doing it or it's something where you've fed her well enough she's developed the the whole follicles and everything like that and then the male should be on her you just you know it's it's non-stop um, but it, yeah, it, it could be a thing where I know people that have monitors and they never do a thing, you know? Um, right. So and try- and it, it, my, my thing with that Kai is I feel, I feel like, you know, not switching it up and making it just making it where they're just complacent and they're just with each other all the time. So yeah. my, my, my game plan with this is, you know, I have, I have what they're, what's supposed to be their final grow out, grow out enclosure, which is like, yeah. eight, it's about just shy of eight feet tall, six feet wide. Um, and then about, you know, about two, three and a half feet deep. Right. But the one they're in now, I'm thinking I'll keep Mac Dre in that, the, the male, and then I'll keep the female in the bigger one and right off the yeah. bat, just separate them. And like, you know, meaning when I get that bigger enclosure, maybe have them hang out for a little bit, but at some point separate them and then going into winter, go ahead and shut things down for the first time. Cause you know, I have never shut last year. They didn't go through any shutdown. I just, cause they're young. I just kept feeding them. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm wondering, yeah, you, you know, know, you don't want to go through it this year. If you, this would be the good year, then. Yeah, this would be a good year. What you're gonna do is, in November, you're gonna start to, October, November, you're gonna taper down in food, and then when you go into November, December, January, I would take care of those three months as the coldest months that are consistent in temperature. You know, right. November sometimes is still pretty warm, and so, uh, right. especially in Southern sure. California, it's not, 100%. it's not really. It's not our, summer, our, our summers yeah. go through Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's not really cold until December, January. So those are the consistent months that I would tackle. You basically take take advantage of the coolness, and it's going to be cold. So you have less heat on. You taper down their food items, and then you can try to bring them back up. You know, this is this is if you know they haven't really been doing anything, and now it's time to all right, we can try to trigger them. You know what I mean? Um, hopefully they'll just get right to it one day where she's what I'm, what I'm guessing is, do you have a major nest bin for the female? I do, but it's not, <laughs> it's, it's unfortunately like Mac Dre's fucking hideout thing though. So Mac it's Dre, not, it's okay. not just for her. He, he abuses the shit yeah. out of it. So like yeah, I, so- I'm redoing all that. Like once the, uh, cause I'm actually getting a nest box with like basically a circle only big enough for her. Right. Um, right. So, but, but then, like I said, here's another reason. <laughs> Um, you know, like I said, I don't have a nest box that's, that she probably is even suitable for right now. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, because because he, he he loves living in there. He'll dig all the dirt out and just be in there, you know? Yeah. Well, what I can recommend is when you get that tapped in for the female and she's comfortable with it, starts to do a lot in it, I think that will help her and the whole process. Trigger shit. For me, right. yeah. It's just the last puzzle or more so of the really fitting puzzle piece. Uh, in everything sure you can have a bunch of food and you can have the, the whole process almost all the way through but dang if you don't have a nesting option that she likes you know and it's almost true what they say is the females would have figured out where they wanted to breed and lay and nest and all that stuff like that right. before the whole process started you know um I, I i noticed that with my girls they're digging and they're doing this premature dig before all the breeding started and that's because they were testing out those those uh those nesting areas that i that i gave them and then the whole process is going now i had a female start maybe about a week and a half ago uh she was just digging all over right digging all over trying to find a a place to nest and then now for the last few days they've been consistently breeding um right so yeah man that might be it where you get her to consistently go and then you figure out how what's going to keep her cycling let's say she's going to lay and then in two months, she'll lay again. If you can get that ball rolling and understand that's going to be your kind of time frame to pay attention. And it 
it's kind of controlled by your diet. It's controlled by your your normal your 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 normal routines that that will sort of I would say predict when she's going to be continually going. You know, if right. let's say yeah. you're lacking on it and you're not feeding a lot, maybe she's not going to do a whole lot. Let's say if you're feeding a whole ton and she can handle it, and she might go a little bit sooner. But I've witnessed for my girls, they take about a 60-day break in between clutches. If you're feeding normal consistently, not over overdoing it, you can really overdo it. You can right. feed them so much Pretty where much. they get gassy and they die. You don't end up dying, you know. Wow. Yeah. So you want to feed just enough regularly. I was gonna say, I mean, like when when it comes to you reintroducing and you get those meals back up, how often are you feeding them then? I mean, because I, I mean, you, three, so you're three, the same times a week. Yeah. So same consistency, but now different diet. Now it's the heavier stuff, is what you're saying, right? Yeah. Now, now it's actually I'll I'd be going only once or twice a week, maybe on during those slow times, right, where I'm right, feeding them right. less. There's less heat, less humidity. They're only eating once or twice a week. The the Back into season, they'll be eating every other day, and then they'll be eating maybe two to three times the amount of food, and then the food is also heavier, heavier. pieces. Yeah, right. Yeah, chicks, chicks, and yolk, and you know the day old quail, day old chicks, things like that. That got the yolk in them. I use fertile quail eggs, so that way they're getting the yolk that comes with the quail egg, the calcium, and right. the quail. Right, and then um, I use mice as well. Uh, don't get me wrong; I still use mice, and then I use like crawfish and shrimp and things like that too. That's what's up. Yeah, well, listen up. I have a wrap-up question for you um, before I let you go here, Kai. It's been an amazing episode, by the way. I appreciate all the information you were killing it. Um, you know, I know you said that you're you've been on the fence on what's pulling you more—the the grasshoppers or the monitors. But I mean, if you could really see yourself in five years. Where do you think it's going to be? Like, I mean, do you feel like the monitors will still be a part of your life just as much, or or do you feel like the grasshoppers will really take over everything? Oh uh, man, I think it's it'll be like if I was revived like a hundred percent and what what I had to do, I think it'd be simplified the monitors more, which I've been trying to do, and just have it like let's say the whole function was a hundred percent, the monitors would be like thirty to twenty five percent, and the grasshoppers would be the rest. You know, it, it sure have a whole grasshopper lot, but I, I, I mean, I, and I really can't couldn't tell you just because the mangrove stuff. I don't produce a ton of them. You know, I only produce a few every every year, and that's it. You know, I don't I, I, I don't I try not to make a lot, but they also don't lay a lot. You know, they don't lay a ton of eggs and things like that. So, um, really though, it's still like I couldn't let it go. Like, I couldn't just be like, all right, I'm going to do grasshoppers only. Because then at the end of the day, I'd be like, dude, I just sold everything just so that way I can have room for grasshoppers. Sure, but fuck, like, I, I, I'm going to be bored now, you know? <laughs> and then, I, and then I'll, try to, I'll try to find something that, like, I, I, may, I may like, but I don't like enough. The lizards that I got now, bro, are dream lizards that I've always dreamed wanted. About, dreamed about yeah. having when I was, like, a teenager. You know what I mean? And I saw like I saw John post a, a a blurry picture of one, and then the ones that I looked on the internet, you know, and then they weren't even really available all the way up until the last few years when um, Michael Cole himself is, you know, kind of just uh, weaving out some of the other stuff, which is, you know, Michael Cole's part of of USARC and everything like that, and he's right. busy as shit, and he's I, I and I have a good amount of his monitors. Another person named uh, Aubrey also has uh has a couple of them too and man they're uh i don't know how to describe them other than they're small docile or for the most part docile and they're gorgeous though they're they're you know you've seen them they're just they're they got crazy colors compared to other mangroves the colors stay and so yeah man i couldn't really leave it because i'd be sitting there bored to be and I'd probably regret it you know um yeah right. yeah well day by day bro all I, all I gotta say is i'm happy with your progress and i can't wait to see what the future holds for you bro i'm, I'm excited for hey, you man. man thanks man now listen for anybody out there who wants to get in contact or wants to get some of your grasshoppers what's the best way to do that how can they do that um you can easy 
find me enough on um, Facebook. I'm most responsive on Facebook. Um, you can more also give me up more, than, more, more than Instagram. Yeah, but I, I still I still get down on Instagram too. So you can find me on Instagram at big underscore lizard one hundred three. Um, that's where you'll find me as well. Um, don't get me wrong, I still check in and everything like that, but. You know, I don't post on there all the time. I may post on there a few times a week and things right. like that. Yeah. So the Facebook though, Facebook Messenger, I'm I'm there, and uh, I'm much more responsive to that. So you can find me at Kai Fan, just K H A I, P H A N, and um, yeah, you should, hopefully we'll have a bunch of mutual friends, and you'll be able to find me through <laughs> that way. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and uh, you can. You know, there's a there's a few other places to find me on, on online and they're all kind of linked together but for the most part yeah just kai fan on facebook and uh, big lizard on on instagram cool and uh yeah man that's what's up now you're looking to hopefully be at pomona or the vegas show at all what's that looking like i'm just curious uh i'm i'm uh i'm trying to kick it at pomona i've actually right. I, won't, I won't be having a full wedding the night before so right, yeah right. i'll be i'll be able to be a little bit more f- more relaxed and free to chill um and i, I want to actually kick it in network though like i think yeah i'm man, gonna totally. come at a come at a time when you know not every i mean when everybody's there what i what i'm no used to doing bro is i'm used to getting in there before a, a gang of motherfuckers are in there and then i gotta like rubber neck with everybody you know and um that's i i kind of i kind of dislike having to do that when Damn, I'm just trying to look at stuff and then leave, you know. So that's that's what I do mostly. Just hop in, chill for an hour or two, grab a bite to eat, grab some stuff, and then dip. I don't know. It's just uh, yeah, yeah. But this time though, I'm trying to stay a little bit later. People are inviting me to like go eat or things like that. So I might I might end up doing all that, man, because I I feel like it's either you're so busy at the show you can't do none of that. Or I'm just I'm just missing out on invites, and I don't want to be missing out too much, man. Well, listen, I can tell you one place that that's an awesome place to hang out, bro, is at the U.S. Arc Auction. Come kick it at the table with me, John, and fucking Andrew, and we'll really have a good time, man. I'm telling you, that's where that's that's where you can really market is at that U.S. Arc Auction. I can tell you that much right now. Yeah. But uh, listen, enjoy the rest of your night, bro. Get back to your grind. I know you're busy. I appreciate your time, but it's the wrap for the homie Kai, ladies and gentlemen. All right, man. See you later, though. Thanks, doggy. Hey, have, have a good night, bro. Appreciate you. Right. What a guy. Awesome shit. Thank you to everyone who tapped in. Appreciate you spending your Sunday here with me and the homie Kai. I learned a lot. I learned a shit ton. Uh, definitely one of those podcasts where I'll go back and re-listen to it a few times. So, uh, man, good stuff. Hope you guys are ready. All my Patreon members, we're going to go over to the Trap Talk Zoom session here in just a second. So if you're out there that want to get tapped into the Patreon family, Right now is your time to do it, man. Head over to the link below in the description and join the Trap Talk Patreon family. Select any one of these memberships and tap in with us, man. It's going to be an amazing time. Cannot wait to tap in with all my Patreon members. And uh, if this is your uh, first time tapping in, do your boy a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. That way you're on top of every single podcast I drop here on this channel. And then also do your boy a favor. Head over to the Snake Trap Sessions vlogs. That's my new vlog channel that I came out with just a couple months. And I'm putting all my vlogs out there, okay? My goal is to come out with at least two vlogs a week, okay? Right now, for sure, it's going to be at least one vlog a week. But my goal, like I said, overall is to try to pump out two vlogs a week. And I want to make it all heat. I want to make it shit that you guys are going to want to listen and and, and check out. So, like I said, head over uh, to the Snake Trap Sessions Vlogs YouTube channel. Check out my last uh, facility tour I did at Mutation Creation if you haven't already. I'm telling you, my last few vlogs – excuse me, my last few vlogs have been fire. So please go subscribe. I appreciate you guys' support. And again, my Trap Talk Patreon members, I'll see you guys in a bit. Be ready. Oh, real quick, before I let you guys go, be ready to get things cracking tomorrow. New Breeder on the Block series. We have Texas is finest, man. I'm telling you right now, this girl is awesome. She has amazing heat and she's really, really nice. Corey Martin in the building, tapping in with us. Six o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Let's go. Cannot wait. This is going to be a good warm-up for uh, Arlington. I have a good feeling about Arlington. It's going to be a show. But, uh, yeah, you guys have a good night. And uh, my Patreon members, you guys know where to go for that Zoom session link. I'll see you guys in a bit. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow if you're not going to be at the Patreon uh, Zoom session. But you guys have a good night.